Good evening. Hello. I've just got in from work and I'm having a cup of tea, which is very much needed. It's been so busy. Um, yeah, it's been so, so busy today at work. For those of you who don't know, I think most of you don't know actually, I don't think I've ever said what I do. I work as a receptionist for social services and the NHS. Um, I'm what's called a joint post. So I work for a multidisciplinary team, a specialist team, who deal with people with learning disabilities. And I've been doing the same job as the receptionist for almost 11 years. And as you can imagine, um, working for social services in London um, <laughs> can be quite challenging. Um, and I take a, a large number of calls every day and have to route them through to the correct people and field them and vet them and all of that. Um, so it's Thursday. It's Thursday evening now and uh, it's nearly the end of the week and I'm just exhausted. Another day to go. Fridays can be really busy sometimes but can also be very quiet but in my experience lately they've been busy because people tend to suddenly realise that they haven't sorted X, Y and Z out and it's Friday, it's the weekend um, and they, they all phone in in the afternoon lastminute.com so I'm just having a cup of tea and um, Paul's going to be getting home soon he's been to Bristol again on business um, so I'm thinking about dinner or as we say up north well as northern people say tea for those of you who don't know People in the north of England uh, tend to call the evening meal tea and people in the south of England tend to call the evening meal dinner. Up north, the middle of the day is dinner time. Down south, the middle of the day is lunch time. So let's just clear that up now. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about what we're going to have for dinner and I'm considering making a spaghetti, um, spaghetti bolognese, for lack of a better word, because really it's not really bolognese, as in proper Italian bolognese, it's my own version. And yeah, I, I am going to make a spaghetti, definitely. And I'm going to do it with soya, with dried soya mints, which in America I think is known as TVP, texturized vegetable protein. Um, and I use soya occasionally, I do quite like it, quite like the texture. Um, but it does require a little bit of work to get the flavor into the dish. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, I must say, I must stop saying I'm gonna show you. I keep saying that all the time. I've noticed I, I say it throughout most of my videos. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do... I must think of different phrases to use because that's getting a little bit boring now for me. So I will show you how to rehydrate soya mints and impart some good flavor into it by doing a little marinade basically. And I'll show you also how to put together a quick, tasty um, spaghetti sauce. So I'm just having my cup of tea first because I need some revival. The caffeine will give me a slight boost, I think, to get me propelled into the kitchen to stand up and cook. I think Paul's home about 7.15, something like that, so I can make the sauce and then I'll cook the pasta when he gets in. And actually, while we're on the subject of cooking pasta, 
each packet of pasta that you buy usually has a set of instructions on it and, and this is really for people that have never cooked pasta or don't cook pasta regularly. So it usually has a set of cooking instructions on the packet and inevitably the timings given range from anything from 7 to 8 minutes to 10 to 12 minutes. I've cooked a lot of pasta over the years in different ways, in bakes, in sauces, you know, obviously the method that most people use is boiling, which is what you tend to do. I find that most of the cooking instructions given on packets are far too long. And I've developed my own golden rule that I always go by. I make sure that the pan is big enough, first of all, and that there's plenty of water. I don't salt the water because I don't believe in adding any extra salt to any meals, really, um, because it's not good for us in large amounts at all. I mean, there's too much salt around in most things. So, big pan of boiling water, plenty of room for the pasta to move around, and I time my pasta and I do this every time for six minutes and then I pull a piece out and I try it because the one thing I really cannot stand is overcooked soggy pasta. Blech. hate it. It really puts me off. In fact, it makes me gag and it, it make, oh, to be honest, it's an effort to eat it. I like my pasta to be al dente, to the tooth. That's what it means, to the tooth. And that means for me, firm, not undercooked. It has to be exactly right. And think about this. When you're cooking pasta, six minutes, check it. If it's undercooked, give it another minute, then check it again. That way you'll find it, you get it to exactly how you want it. Also, bear in mind, the pasta, if you leave it in a hot environment, i.e. in the pan with the water, even if you've turned it off, it's still going to cook. So there's always a minute or so leeway, especially if you're going to be putting that into another sauce and maybe baking it. You're getting where I'm coming from. If you're doing a pasta bake, you only need to part cook it or par cook it, as we say in cookery. Um, I might not have explained that very well. So basically, all the pasta I cook, I cook it for six minutes and then I check it and then I add an extra minute's cooking time as I see fit. And I keep on trying the pasta until it, it's just cooked to my liking. What you can do, you can refresh pasta, and that means plunge it into cold water to stop the cooking process. And that's useful if you're going to be putting it into a sauce, like a macaroni cheese, and then baking it in the oven. Because if you overcook the pasta to begin with, and then you bake it in a sauce, it's going to be falling apart by the time you come to serve it and ugh, frankly, no. I might have eaten it like that years ago when I was a greedy 20 something who didn't really care but now I really care about the texture of things and their appeal and spaghetti I love al dente, just firm but cooked. Mm. Lovely. So I'm going to finish my tea. I'm going to, again, I'm going to finish my tea. And then I'm going to go into the kitchen and start cooking the sauce. And let's see what happens. Okay, guys, you'll have to be content with watching my hands during this. So 
we've got the usual trio of ingredients. So I've done a couple of sticks of celery, an onion and a carrot chopped up and two cloves of garlic. Okay, so those are your basic ingredients for most, most things that I do. But what I need to do before I set that cooking, I need to rehydrate the soya. Let me show you the soya first of all. Let's see if I can get a, a focus on that. So this is savoury soya protein mince. And I think I got this from, well, I think Paul got it from uh, Holland and Barrett. And it's actually made by Neil's Yard. So I'm going to open that. I tend to use a sort of handful per person. So into this jug, I'm going to put one, two, three. Okay, now before I add any, and, and let's just have a look at this. For those of you who've not seen soya before, it's like a hard dried grain basically what I normally do is I add all my flavorings my major flavorings to the soya I'm going to show you what I'm using I'm adding a dash of liquid aminos Bragg's liquid aminos it's a bit like soy sauce now this is really good. It's lower in salt than soy sauce. It's got no preservatives. It's full of goodness. However, don't be fooled by the title. Amino acids that make up protein are a macronutrient. So we need quite a significant amount of protein per day in our diet. This is only going to provide you with trace amounts, so actually it's not that great for a nutrient. Um, micronutrients are your vitamins and minerals, which we do need trace amounts of. Aminos, we need quite a bit of protein per day. I can't remember the exact amount that we need, but anyway, it's good as a flavouring. So I'm going to add a good dash, not too much. I'm going to add a good dash of balsamic vinegar. I'm adding some oregano, dried oregano. Um, I would say that's probably two teaspoons. Don't scrimp on the herbs when you're cooking with soya because you do need plenty of flavour. This is dried basil, similar amount, about two teaspoons. Now the surprising ingredient that I'm going to use is turmeric. And people will be probably saying, but that's used for curry. Well, it is used for curry. It's also used to give color. It's actually not that strong a spice, but it's used for color. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon. And the other spice that I'm going to use is some smoked paprika. And you may be thinking, wow, i never use that. I'm just using about half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. It just gives an edge to the dish. And a couple of other ingredients. My usual trusty marmite. I'm going to add, I would say, about a good half a teaspoon. The best way to do this is just to pop the teaspoon directly in and leave it because you're going to struggle to get it off the spoon. It will come off once we put the liquid in. Another couple of ingredients for this, a heaped teaspoon of bouillon powder, a heaped teaspoon, a teaspoon of honey, because all good tomato-y recipes benefit from a little sweetness. Good, and a good splash of red wine. It's probably about a third of a glass. 
and then a good good amount of black pepper okay so we've got all those ingredients in there with the soy with the soy mince the final ingredient is hot water from the kettle I've just boiled this and you want to add probably twice the amount of water to soy mince. And we're just going to stir those two spoons so we can get the ingredients, the marmite and the honey. Make sure the marmite and the honey are completely off the spoons. Okay, let me show you that. It's quite liquid. It's quite liquid at the moment. What you need to do is leave that. Just leave it. So now we're going to make the base for the sauce, for the pasta sauce. So a glug of olive oil, turn on the heat. Now remember, don't heat it to higher temperature. You don't want it to be frying really high temperature uh, because that's not good for oil. So just heat it nicely. You can see that it's going more liquid. Pop in these ingredients. Pop them all in. No one at a time malarkey, just get them all in. And Remember, I leave the leaves on the celery because it gives great flavour. And they're edible, perfectly edible, great flavour. Good. Give that a stir. Now we really do need this to cook down. So we're going to put the lid on that. Sorry about the noise. We're going to put the lid on that and we're going to leave that to cook. On a low heat for a good five minutes. So that's been cooking down for about five minutes. And I don't know whether you can see, it's really difficult to see, but this is the soya. So the soya has swollen up and absorbed some of the liquid. It won't absorb all of it because you, well, I put extra liquid in because you need a little bit of extra liquid for your sauce. But this has swollen up and it's absorbed the flavours and the marmite and all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all of that to here. And just pop it straight in. And basically it just looks like minced beef in there. Stir it through. So you've now got a sort of minced beef and vegetable mix. And oh, I'm getting some lovely smells now. The red wine smell is coming through. And it's, yeah, it's lovely. Herby, red winey. Okay, we'll just turn the heat up slightly. And to that, we're going to add a tin of chopped tomatoes. A tin of chopped tomatoes.
And the final ingredient, vegetable wise, is a handful of frozen tomatoes from last year's harvest. Just popping in a handful. That extra tomato flavour. And then last but not least, I like to pop in a, a good teaspoon, a good heaped teaspoon of pesto, basil pesto, just to give it extra flavour. A good teaspoon, I mean a good heaped teaspoon, just gives that nice basil -y kick. Remember, cooking with soya is all about getting as much flavour into the dish as you can. And that is basically it. Now, the trick here is to cook this well. So bring it up to the boil. And in my experience, a good pasta sauce is always improved with some long cooking time. The carrots have got to cook because they're not soft yet, so it's got to have a good 10 to 15 minutes at least for those to cook. But the flavours will develop over time. And you know, this sauce can be used for anything really. It could be used to build a lasagna. It's not too dissimilar to the moussaka sauce that I did. Except this has a sort of meatier edge to it because of the soya. So Okay, that's good, it's coming to a boil. I'm going to put it onto the back burner, which is a small burner, so we're using less gas. <clears throat> there we go, and we'll leave that for a while on a low heat. And what I normally do is put the lid on, as you can see, with a bit of a gap to let the, some of the steam come, to let some of the steam out, which will help to reduce it. So leave that on a low heat. You can actually just forget about that. Um, give it the odd stir. But I'm gonna cook that. I mean, it's half past six now. Paul's getting home about half seven. So effectively, it could actually sit on a low heat for a good half an hour. Just keep checking it and giving it an odd, the odd stir. And after about half an hour, taste it. Check the seasoning, see what you think and add, you know, whatever you need to add. You might want to add some tomato puree to it. I haven't got any tomato puree. I might add a dash of tomato ketchup to it, you know? Okay, so we'll come back and see how that does in a little while. So I just had to share this with you. Okay, so the sauce is cooking. Uh, we're gonna have a look at that. So the sauce is looking <laughs> so, the sauce is on the go, that's cooking away, and like I said earlier, it will benefit from cooking as long as it can cook. I mean, you could actually do that in the slow cooker and just leave it to cook all day, and it would be amazing by the time you come to serve it. But anyway, the reason I'm doing this little bit in between Paul's coming back from Bristol. He's just sent me a text. Guess what it says? Yeah, delayed. Every time. <sighs> this country is backwards. We don't do things quickly enough and we're not forward thinking enough. That's it. 
the train situation is ridiculous. Sort it out. Get a better system. You know. Anyhow, ha ha ha. Happy Thursday. I'm cooking. That's fun. That's what I'm going to focus on. So my sauce is cooking away lovely, lovely, jubbly. It will be very tasty and we'll serve it with spaghetti and probably a generous helping of cheese on top. I haven't got any parmesan so it would just be bog standard cheddar. Just as nice. Yum. Okay, so my sauce has been cooking for a good, a good, I don't know, 40 minutes maybe. As you can see, it's lovely. It's looking really nice. So I'm just test the seasoning. Mmm. Mmm. So it's got a really nice tomato -y, acidic, herby flavour, which I really like in a pasta tomato sauce. What you can do, and what people sometimes do, is add a little bit of milk if you find it too acidic. But that's part of the trick when you add cheese, because that complements the flavour. So that to me is a lovely tomato-y vegetable and soya sauce, ideal for spaghetti. I've got my pan of boiling water here. I'm gonna plunge my spaghetti into that now. It's a rolling boil. I hope you can see that. I'm just pushing the spaghetti in as it softens. There's my grated cheese, ready to go on top. I've got my sieve ready to drain the pasta. My sauce is fine, that's lovely and gorgeous. Now we're just waiting for the pasta. So that's six minutes, I'm gonna turn the heat off, the pasta, and I'm gonna just try a piece. It's cooked. Get it out of the hot water as quickly as possible. Drain and serve. Okay, see you at the table. So when you're serving pasta, if you use the pasta fork, you lift up the pasta like that, pop it onto the plate. So Paul, are you going to try it? I am. It's lovely having come back on a long train journey. Mmm, lovely. Nice and herby. Nice and cheesy. Slightly acid, which is lovely. Yeah. But sweet as well. Good. So I'm going to eat more now. Yeah, me too. So that's the end. See you all soon. Bye. Bye.